friends, it's Jess from JessCrafts.com and today I wanted to share two quick cards that I think would work for pretty much anyone who has some crafty supplies as long as you have a water-based medium which would be watercolors, water-based pens like Zig, Arteza, these are mermaid markers from Jane Davenport. Um, pretty much any water-based medium will let you achieve this effect and I'm going to do it with my Jane Davenport mermaid markers which are available at Michael's and so they're a little bit more easily accessible. And I'm going to do it with my Zig markers, but I know that the Arteza markers would be able to do it as well. I recently won those and so, and I've been very happy with the way they work. And they work very similar, so I know you'd be able to achieve that effect. So really all I'm doing is creating a rainbow circle. And here with the mermaid markers, there's actually not an orange. I'm using the yellow and mixing with the red to create an orange. So you could do this even with a pretty limited palette. Most palettes do include the six rainbow colors, but you know, even if they had it. So the mermaid markers that I'm using are starfish, pirate's gold, seaweed, Byron Bay, and jellyfish. And as you can see, all I'm doing is scribbling them on, trying to imagine what about a third of the circle is going to look like. And then I'm blending them into the past color by going over each color with the one next to it. So like I'm taking my green and I'm scribbling it over some of the yellow that I had already put down. And then I'm gonna take my yellow and color it back into the green and continue to repeat that step until I get all the way around the circle. And I'm not worrying if some areas wind up to be a little bit larger than others. It's bound to happen, it's not that big a deal. We're just kind of trying to create a fun look and I'm, using two images that I had previously colored for the um, cat sorry Kathy Rakusin 30 day coloring challenge over on Instagram I colored up some little lawn fawn critters and this was a quick way of turning them into cards instead of just leaving them as colored images in a pile on my desk which I have a tendency to do and so now I'm repeating it with the zig markers and I'm using 22 70, 50, 47, 32, and 80. You could pair this technique with pretty much any stamped images you own. I would just base the circle size on the stamped image you're using. I also feel though that the technique really works well with a neutral colored image because if you are coloring something and make, you know, if the image is red, it's going to sort of either blend into the red part of the background or make the red feel more dominant. So I would, you know, consider a neutral colored critter like an elephant, a whale, um, anything gray or brown would probably work well. I do, and I personally am a big fan of gray and black with rainbows. And so I'll pull that in towards the end when I add a black mat around these images as well. I am going to make it just a bit more interesting by die cutting these white panels. And I am working on a watercolor, or no, a Bristol paper from Strathmore. You could work on a watercolor paper. Again, the reason I wanted to just show this quick, simple idea is because I really think that almost anybody with art and craft supplies could achieve something pretty similar. I am going to add some optional details at the end, like I am going to stamp a sentiment you might not have that and you might just want to write out your sentiment you could still create something pretty similar you could still use the same sentiment just writing it out yourself or modifying it to make it a little bit simpler when i'm working with the zig markers and i'm overlapping them i am scribbling a little bit off to the side here and the reason that i'm doing that is just so that i don't get too much of one color on the marker and also so that my I feel like my marker is clean when I put it away because that red is, for instance, picking up a lot of the purple and I don't want it to still be there later. So I just kind of wipe my marker off at the end and that gets rid of the purple and it doesn't do any harm to the marker tip because it is a real true brush tip. So I stamped this sentiment from Your Next Stamp onto some black cardstock and I white heat embossed it. That really wasn't the you know focus of the card technique today, so I didn't show too much detail in terms of that. But literally just put down your embossing powder bag, stamp the sentiment, and put the embossing powder over it, heat it up. 
I did use cat scrappiness cross stitched dies to cut out my white panel instead of just making it a plain white edge but again you could totally do this to me it's just a quick idea for how to finish up use up some of those images or if you need a quick card you could totally do this because coloring one of those little tiny elephants from Lawn Fawn is a very quick coloring activity and you could make a bunch of cards like I will put these in um, my group of cards to donate I do donate a lot of my cards and all of that information is always in the video description below so that is it for me today I hope you liked this simple watercolor technique if you did please give the video a thumbs up and I will link the products that I used in the video description below and I'll be back very soon with the 10 cards one kit video for you thanks for watching bye